All right, anyway. Um, so we used to do this like once a month in the server, um, but then we kind of just fell off of it. And so I really feel like this is like a, especially like this month of October um, is like really important for us to start shielding because like I stated before in like my big announcement, like normally what they call the quote unquote, the veil between the physical and the spirit world is like very thin. So like that means like activity and um, other supernatural stuff and which may could be increased like in tax for like malicious bad spirits and all. So it's very important we sh you know, shield ourselves, you know, I recommend daily. So <clears throat> I guess with that being said, we'll get to it. So what is an energetic shield? Okay, so a shield is an energetic bar barrier powered by you, drawing energy from the earth and other sources that surround you in a sphere of divine energy and love, preventing any negativity from entering and dwelling within. All right, because that's very, very important. And, and why you should seal, shield yourself. Important to shield yourself because we are like energetic sponges, you know? We can unintentionally absorb other people's energies and emotions. And we don't want to take those emotions, like take on the emotions of others, especially if they are angry, upset, depressed, or if they are having like feelings that like make you feel uncomfortable in any other way. Like you don't want to, you know, take the take on those emotions and then bring it back to your space, your home, and then you potentially like pass that on to your friends and your family, your roommates, like whoever, you know, and with that being said, those negative energies and emotions can attract and draw negative and unwanted entities towards you, okay? And then sometimes people have their own negative um, entities attached to them that could latch on to you. So we really, really don't want that. That's why it's so, so important to yourself from like these kind of things, you know? other you know, other entities you know are not so I'll shelf. i recommend you shield yourself at least twice a day at the start of your day before you head out of your home for work school or if you're running errands just do it before then so anyway um i recommend you shield like anytime before you leave the house and then before bedtime so like you can have like you're good before you like go out and you know dream and astral travel travel while you remember it or not and then, or you could just do it once if you don't feel like you need to do that extra preca precautionary step. In that case, you can choose when you'd like to shield yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now to shield yourself, you can close your eyes, take some deep breaths to make sure you feel calm and in that meditative state. Now this is where your creativity can shine. There's no right or wrong way to create a shield. I mean, it can be simple or as creative as you wish it to be. And if you guys want, you can unmute and I'd love to, you know, hear some more like, um, you know, how you guys shield yourself. I can go first. Um, there's a couple ways I like shield myself. There's a couple times where sometimes I, I like to imagine like a pair of like wings around me. I like to imagine angel wings around me as a shield. You can, you know, take a, like if you want to make that into your own, you can steal that idea. Or if you guys like dragons, you can imagine like dragon wings around you or something like that. Um, or if there's another like winged animal you guys really, really like, you can imagine the wings as a shield wrapped around you for that. But I like to imagine angel wings around me. Um, that's one of the ways I like to do it. Another way is if I'm just being lazy and in a rush to leave the house, I'll just imagine like a ball of light around me. Like it's that simple. And um, if I'm being extra, feeling extra spicy and uh, like warrior like, I could either imagine like a ring of fire, fire around me as a shield or. Um, Okay, for those of you who play this video game called Devil May Cry, um, my favorite character, Virgil, he has this special move where he has he summons these swords and they're in like and they 
a swing in a circle around him. I kind of took that as like a shield and have those all those swords swinging around me as my shield. If I'm just like, oh, you know, don't, you know, mess with me. Like I'm in uh, warrior mode right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can maybe see if I can find a, a gif. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thanks for it within. That's exactly how I do it. Yep. <laughs> I, I love doing that that's probably my preferred method like because it's just I love it I love that ability so much and um so yeah I mean um there's like other ways you guys can shield yourself you know it like I said it could be so easy as just you know ball of light and what really uh, counts as a shield is really stating your attention like oh like the shield what I like to to say in the morning as um i i build a shield around me i protect myself from any negativity that may enter no negativity may enter my shield no energy or low vibrational entities are a lot not they're not allowed through my shield only my positive um high vibrational guides can come through and talk to me and if any negativity is sent my way, I send it back to the sender or, you know, that's what I say. You can make up something like that. But all that counts is tension into the shield. And I'll start reading these comments. And like I said, you guys can unmute and I'd love to, you know, hear how you guys yourselves. Like, you know, the more ideas, the creativity, you know. Oh, Sky Woman said, I imagine myself as a solid, as solid gold, nothing negative can physically or etherically harm me. I like that. That's good. That's really good. Uh, do you have to keep your cl eyes closed or you can keep them open? And you know what? Whatever makes you feel more comfortable with, whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you can just, you know, get you to focus and just say, hey, I put the shield around myself, then whatever works, you can keep your eyes open or closed. Just whatever you feel comfortable with, you know, to get into that calm, relaxed state. Oh, yeah. And Sky Woman says, usually when I go to bars, pubs, I mentally say this. Yes, definitely in those areas, especially you want to shield in. That is a very good point. And I'm glad you said that because there can be a lot of you know, low vibrational en uh, energy in those bars and pubs and stuff like that. So that's really good. I, I like that you do that. Uh, Regina said, I wish I could speak right now, but I'm outside. I have used elements in my shields, numerology, in my middle chakra, solar plexus, heart and throat. I used obsidian and black tourmaline energies as a cloak for my shields. Yes, I like that. We'll be talking about more gemstones I have so many like crystals to help you guys. So I have a list of things, but yeah. My Tulpa Gundam has it has energy shields. Ooh, I like that. That's a good idea. Oh my god. Think about like having like a Tulpa as like a shield too. I like that. And then Regina says, when I do my shields, I meditate as I put up my shields. I try to make sure. I individually spend a little time with each shield. Yes, you definitely do. I'm just reading some more comments. I went from doing nine hour shields to now 12 hours. Wow, what? That's a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. A lot of shields. <laughs> I salute you for doing all that. Do I have any more slides? Of course I do. I have uh, maybe about 20 more slides. Um, just making sure everybody wanted to like get out what they said and typed. They have any other creative ideas, but I, I'll keep going. How do you know when your shields are activated? That is a very good question. Um, for, there's no wrong way for that feeling. For me, when I know my shield is activated, I feel more confident in myself. Like I feel like, um, just this courageous energy. Like I have, like, I feel like I can take on my day better. Like, um, so that's how, that's what I feel when, that's how I know when my shield is activated. That could look like, you know, that could feel different for other people. That's just how I know when my shield's ready or, um, 
when they're activated. Doesn't have to take a long time either. You could literally hold a shield in like five minutes, like three minutes. Like you could literally just set a timer on your phone and just either eyes or keep them open, but make sure you just imagine whatever you want to imagine around you and just saying you had intention like, hey, this is my shield. And if you just focus on that for like the two, three, five minutes, then like you're good, in my opinion. That's because that's how long it usually takes for me to build a shield. Like it doesn't take super long to do. I listened to some clearings from a healer I used to work with, but a simple one I say is say activate my personal source seal shield of personal protection and then I will true after saying this. Okay, yeah, I like that too. That's good. Thank you for just su suggesting that. All right, I'm gonna keep comments, but I'm gonna keep on going. Cause there's other like things, ideas, you know, with your shields too. Um, okay. And these are images you can, you know, use to, you know, get that imagery in your head, like what your shield could look like. Like I said, it could just be simple, your ring of fire, your bubble, even a cube if you're want to be different. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it could literally be any shape, like, literally, it could be anything. And, um, actually, I, I should mention this, too. I was reading one of my books that I've got my information from, and one of the ways they mention that they shield themselves is they have, like, a, a favorite, like, winter jacket they really like, and what they do is they imagine, like, that leather jacket on them and, like, the um astral ethereal whatever you know plane you want to call it like but it's ba like it's physically not on them but it's on them like and energetically and they use that as their shield like that coat that makes them feel like um that makes them feel good and that, that confidence you know what i mean so that's a good idea too that if you guys want to use that um and then i know somebody on here i don't know if they're here um, I think his name is, uh, somebody here likes to use, like, a Merkaba, and you can use that, it, 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 if you, if another word for it is, uh, Metatron's cube, but if you also want to imagine that Merkaba around you as a shield, like, that, that totally works, too. And then, um, yeah, so shims can, shapes can be simple, complex, yes, Holly, exactly, Yes, like, mm -hmm. that's, that's very powerful too. Um, but yeah, shapes can be simple, complex, or any way meaningful to you. If you just have a favorite shape, like you like triangles or something, like, go for it. And the color of your shield can be as random or as com and comfortable as you want. Or the color can have a programmed intention to it. If you want it to, and here, um, colors, let me hide that. Um, guys can take a screenshot of that, you know, if you want to have a specific, uh, color for your day, then that works too. So that's completely optional. Um, that's interesting, uh, we're within. We'll definitely talk about that afterwards. And then can we multitask when activating shields? Like, for example, reading while activating? Yes, you can do that while you're doing that. I, that's actually, like, very important you do that, too. Especially, like, if you do, like, clients and you're on the go, you got to quickly activate a shield while doing readings. Like, yes, you can definitely do that, too. And then, yes, uh, Holly, rainbow shield. I should have put that on here. That's a good idea. Thank you for suggesting that, too. Yeah, if you guys want to do rainbow shields as well, go for yeah. it. And then Regina said, call on Metatron to help clear your thoughts. I don't remember who said this. They mentioned, imagined a blue light going through your head or something like that. It helped me. So you can definitely call on him, too. That's my man. But um, that's my bro. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, I get yeah, definitely do that too. I did um list a couple of angels on like the last part of the slide too. So yeah, but all right, all right. I'm gonna move on. Oh, dragon, the gold dragon. <laughs> and oh, you know what too? You guys can do too. You can actually you see this um dragon that Zion sent in the chat. You can literally imagine like that dragon as a shield around you too. Like, you, you could literally do that, too. I like dragons. 
And then also you can also um, shield others and then you can put on a shield on a building which is referred to as a ward or a warding and which is by its definition is an energetic shield that surrounds a building such as your home or a workplace that is powered by an external source such as a crystal grid designed to protect within those uh, walls from harm. Like, if you feel like you need to do that too, then by all means, I recently had to do that. I had to put a warding on a building because, yeah, that was crazy. But anyway, and then, we, yeah, we have crystals. Our crystals can help with protection and shielding too. And um, I, how do you recommend warding a building? Okay, there's a couple ways. You can put like physical objects around the building like gemstones or other protective symbols here. Uh, I'll get into in a minute. I have that on my slide too. Or if you want to do it like in the astral or mentally, you can do that too. Because I had to do that in the mental because like there's nowhere I could these crystals or objects around the building um yeah i had to like imagine um like a whole like light just like cleansing and like engulfing like the building toward it um basically i imagined like this like cleansing holy angelic fire around the building and inside the building too because that needed to be cleansed as well like oh my god but anyway and so, yeah, that Zion, War Within, I really love these images, bro. That's what I basically did, too. Not only did I do, like, imagine the fire purifying, like, inside and outside of the building. Um, I also wrote these, like, little, like, things that this GIF is showing from War Within. So that's how I do it. Um... I probably should have looked up different ways how to ward a building, but mostly I've seen either like objects placed outside of it. And um, like I said, I'll get into those objects in a minute and then doing it like astrally and, you know, in your mental um, space. So talismans. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. All right. So, you know, when you get a, a crystal, you know, be absolutely sure you cleanse it first and then program your intention to it. Like if you take away one thing from this class as well, like intention is everything. Like that's how you, you know, do things. So you can either put your crystal in like some kind of cloth in the sunlight or in the moonlight but um if you do it in the sunlight just leave it in there outside for like two to five minutes because you don't want your crystal to be like damaged by like the rays of the sun you know but if you're doing it by moonlight a lot of people recommend leaving it your crystal out overnight so you can do that or if you have a water safe crystal um you can run it under water. Just make sure your crystal is water safe. Like, please Google that because that's very, very, very important to do that. Um, to make sure your crystals are water safe because some of them aren't. I know selenite is not good, is not water safe. And fluorite isn't safe either. But, um, yeah, I would definitely Google that. And a general rule of thumb, if a crystal ends in ite, then it's most likely not safe like safe to put in water so for a water safe crystal you can cleanse it through a body of water um running it under your faucet or like you know you can uh, cleanse it outside yeah they break down the liquid mm -hmm. or in my personal opinion the easiest way to do it is just bathe your crystal in smoke in like a sage bundle polysanto or frankincense or any other cleansing herb that I also have on this PowerPoint as well that you guys can take a screenshot of as well. So I'm not going to go over the crystals. You can screenshot them if you like. I might just talk about like the most important crystals. But I have like a whole list you guys can, you know, take a screenshot of. And like most of these crystals are easy to get. You can find them in your... um local crystal metaphysical shop or you can find them on etsy like literally etsy is like my go-to for like everything so my personal opinion the most important crystal on this slide is the black tourmaline it's very powerful and very 
like protective and very effective against defending negativity and shielding you. It can help disperse anxiety and neutralize uh, frantic energy. And it, you know, supports you by keeping negative thoughts at bay and like all that bad energy from entering your personal space. So I will give you all a second to screenshot if you like. And then I will move on. And then I think the most important on um, crystal on this uh, PowerPoint right now is clear quartz. It can be protective, but it also another good thing about clear quartz is that it can amplify other crystals and energy. So say if you have quartz with another like protective crystal, it will just effectively like, you know, boost it. I mean, you don't have to have core quartz for that. Like the crystals can do, you know, their own thing. But if you personally feel like you want that, then I would recommend that. And um, yeah, I also like hematite too. I should have put a star around it, but hematite's good too. Yeah, yeah, black tourmaline, man. It's one of the major crystals. I hope like that's a confirmation for you. <laughs> And then we have others here. Um, it is a beautiful stone, Regina. It is. <gasps> oh, your bracelet broke. Oh no. Probably took in a lot of negativity. It did it, it, it did its thing. <laughs> um, okay. I'm gonna go on the next slide. And there's three very, very, very important crystals on this slide. I like to point out um, Moonstone is very protective, but especially the Black Moonstone is like very, very protective. Like, so I would recommend that too, along with Onyx. Onyx can come in many different colors. They all basically serve the same purpose. All like, you know, um, absorb the negative energies and transmute them. And, uh, oh, that's pretty cool. I, you know, a Moonstone is so pretty. And then same thing with obsidian too. There's many different varieties of obsidian. You have mahogany, flake. Um, there's a couple others. And then you just have black obsidian. And they all serve a very same purpose. They, um... Oh, Shungite's on here. It is. I think it's on the next slide. Am I saying? Sorry. Yeah, so um, it's also a very, very powerful stone. I think obsidian is very powerful up there along with black tourmaline, in my opinion. So I would definitely recommend obsidian to you guys. I love obsidian too. And then we have, yep, here's Shungite right here. But and then Ruby, I didn't know a power stone for protection. Like the way the book I was reading was saying like how it's very powerful and protective and could be even like sensitive to like energetic like people sensitive people so I was really surprised so I know Ruby's kind of a little you know pricey so you know but it's a surprise to me if that's you know what you know you want to look into go ahead I highly recommend you guys look into these crystals on your own too and then another good one is selenite. Like selenite is your best friend. Like like it cleanses and transmute crystals, and it's very good too. I would recommend it to be high up there along with obsidian and black tourmaline. I know, and shungite's amazing. It's very. It is also a protective stone. And what I also like about shungite is that it's protective against um, magnetics that can kind of be harmful to you so yeah op be a protective stone opal um you know what i'm not sure i have heard that it can but i would definitely look into it technically if you know if you program it, it could be all like if you program your intention to any crystal it could still serve as protection technical like I, I can't pronounce it technicality um yeah like it probably won't be as effective as like the other crystals but you could still you know program it to do that if you wish it to be by by all means 
And then you have smoky quartz that I was surprised too to find out that could be protective and also I didn't know also protect you against like environmental like stuff and um frequent uh, electromagnetic frequencies so that was a surprise for me too and then and then the last three on this slide is soda light tiger's eye and turquoise you know i'll let you guys screenshot that if you want and then let's see it's on our list is we have protective symbols that you can you know, use toward a building or put it inside your room. You could print it, buy like paper or something, or like um, you could like print it, use a poster. Like you can probably find these symbols like anywhere and you can even buy us bracelets and stuff. Um, so yeah. So we have like divine images, like literally could be an any god, goddess, if you fuck with that. Cause I know some people don't really, or have different opinion on deities, which, you know, that's fine and dandy, like whatever makes you comfortable. And then we have saints, angels that, you know, you feel drawn to that are sacred to you. They can be pot uh, potent protectors. They can be like statues, pictures, like you could literally print it out or if you feel comfortable drawing them, because I know we got some creative people in here. And um, what else? And like, yeah, I have like a little like angel bracelet with like little angel, all the angels on the charms on like a bracelet. So it could be something like that too. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Our first um, symbol is the eye. It's protect. It's, it can be a, a charm or whatever. Like I said, it can be literally anything. It can reverse and deflect and send back negativity to people who send it to you or have that like malicious intent to do so. So you know, evil eye and all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have the ha hems. A Middle Eastern symbol that's often also depicted with an eye. It can also deflect neg negativity away from you and it could be worn as a charm, hung around inside and outside of your home. Yeah, they're pretty cool charms. I agree, yeah. And then the horseshoe, I actually forgot about this. Like, I remember hearing something about this like a long time ago and then I kind of just forgot about it. But horseshoes are not only recognized as good luck charms, but they can also be protective. They can, because of the iron that um, horseshoes are made out of, it can repel ghosts, you know, malicious fairies and of other unwanted spirits. So um, people typically would hang up a horseshoe on like above their doorways or whatever, but you can probably, you know, do whatever you want with that. So yeah oh thank you thank you pen coastal shaman that means a lot to me i'm really glad you're loving this information so far that means a lot <laughs> and then we have a pentagram i know this symbol may be controversial and may make some people uncomfortable but if you you know are into like witchcraft you know if you're on that path like this could be a very protective and powerful symbol too and you know, you can find that literally anywhere. And um, if you don't feel comfortable showing it, you could literally have it as a charm, like, and hide it in your pockets, wallets, and bags. And then I have something for you guys, the next slide. Now, if you guys are a fan of Supernatural, this also counts as a pentagram, and you can uh, use this intention to, you know, be a protective symbol. And it, you could also be discreet with that, too. Like, if you use that, that symbol as, like, a shield, it's literally so powerful. And, like, people won't even know you're using it as a shield. They'll be like, oh, it's supernatural. Hey! You know? <laughs> they won't know. But yeah, you could use this symbol, too. It technically counts. I go for it. Um, in the very episode of that, of Supernatural, Sam had said to Amy, oh, the pentagram is a protection against evil. It's really powerful. And typically in the show, um, the two main characters, if you guys don't are not familiar with the show, I love the show so much, but um, uh, the, two, uh, Sam, the two main characters, Sam and Dean, had this symbol tattooed onto them. It, was, it served as an anti-possession symbol for like, to prevent like demons and other ghosts from possessing them. So hey, if you're cool with that, if this is your thing, go for it. 
as long as that intention to protect you, to help protect you is there, like, it's good. And then we have this Norse rune right here. If you guys like, you know, Norse stuff or like Norse runes, this is a very, very, very protective one as well. And yeah, I like this one a lot too. And again, you can literally do anything, like print it out, find it as a charm or bracelet. Oh, you use that rune a lot? That's good. Yeah, I'm glad. And then we also have runes from Cash's catalog that are also inspired by the TV show Shadowhunters. We have this uh, protector, a protection guardian rune right here. Um, you can draw this anywhere you know if you need to you can use that as a symbol i don't think you can really like buy this anywhere so you can draw it or try to or you could like print it out or something if you can do that somehow and then we also have the heavenly fire one um it's been said that this rune is very powerful but um yeah this rune is protects and transmutes negativity and you can draw this around your house. I know, like, if you've ever seen Genie on video, shout out to him. Like, he has, like, literal um, pictures hanging of the symbol, like, on his roof and his ceiling. And it's just so funny to me every time I see it. But it's so cool. Yes, I love this rune, Pencoastal Shaman. I actually have it tattooed on me. Like, I love, I love the rune so much. It means a lot. And then uh, we'll move on from here. And then lastly, lay a kept on. Uh, what do you mean this image is normal? Well, anyway, um, you can actually get really super creative and create your own rune, your own rune sigil symbol. Um, do I have any recommendations for protecting against negative reptilians? Okay. Do you mean like physically or astrally? IDK. Okay. Um, physically? <laughs> Ashley mostly. Okay. In the astral, I mean, you could, you know what? I mean, the most you can probably do is like, you know what? I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. I'm so sorry. Um, I think the most, the only thing that comes to my mind if you want to be protective in the astral is if you call on one of your spirit guides to help protect you from those beings. Um, like literally that is the only thing that comes to my mind that like I can say on that because I'm like, wow, like how would someone do that? Cause usually, yeah, astral guards, yeah, probably because usually, um, you know, I'm like, my own guardians so like i just fight against those things so i i feel so bad that i don't have um a tip for that tulpas could work too for sure okay but yeah so which experience stands out for you the most protective crystal for me personally i use obsidian um i've always been drawn to obsidian and um i feel like that's the most protective crystal um that i have um uh, without that i use that i feel comfortable with i actually have like a um obsidian crystal angel wing that i wear as protection to protect my energy um so that's my personal favorite crystal for that um so yeah and then okay yeah um you can create your own runes like there's like literally like there's so many different ways like you could just look it up on how to do it but um our amazing team member jan had done a video on how to make your own runes and that's available on our gfcc youtube channel so i would highly recommend you guys go check that out if you want to make your own because like sometimes making your own thing can be just as powerful if not more powerful so if you know if that's something you want to get creative with and interested in i would highly highly do that so this is this is her video so that's what that looks like so yeah and i have a good bit of herbs that is good for you know banishing and shielding too like you could carry the herbs in like a little bag carry it on you or you could burn them if they're safe to burn that is um 
or you could um some people like to use certain herbs and like stitch it in their pillow or something like I know a lot of people do that with like lavender um which is on here too but yeah there's like a good thing good amount of ways you can use herbs as like to help you um these are some different herbs uh my two personal favorite on here is angelica um i've actually never personally used it but i've heard so many like stories that it's very good and very protective like it's it banishes it's like a um basically it's like the exorcist in like an herb form <laughs> And then um, you also have dragon's blood, which I absolutely love, 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 love dragon's blood. You can get it like as an incense stick or actually with some of these herbs too, they can come in like an oil that you could either use as an essential oil to like burn, well not burn, but you know, use in your space or it could be used as an oil to put on your skin for that reason too. So I would definitely look into these different herbs and what's safe on your skin, what's safe to put maybe in your bath water or something if you do that. Um, cause I know some herbs aren't good for that, but, um, yeah. So take a screenshot if you'd like, um, I'm moving on to the next herbs and then garlic too. And yeah, lavender, a lot of people like I actually didn't know if some people considered it, considered it to be protective but because of its like high vibration like apparently it's like super effective so you can like literally like lavender is like anywhere you can you know like use it as a room mist you can have it like in like different lotions and whatever like there's so many ways you can use lavender and then rosemary is very good too um i know like you'd probably have to burn it in like a stick i know that come that's a thing too i just never personally use it for that reason let's see okay all right and these are some, there's, this is just a general list of general protection herbs. I didn't really bother, you know. Some of these are like hard to find, but if you want to look into them, go ahead. You probably will most likely find most of these or again at like a metaphysical store. But I also highly recommend Hyssop too. Like I hear a lot that that's really really good for protection but other than all you want to leave it sad but this is general protection and this is for banishing like if you got some entities like you know you want to get rid of them here's a quick list definitely look into that too and then um herbs for purification again a quick little list look into it whatever you've want to experiment with or just keep it simple and then I like get protection too so that's a very important thing too I would look into as well okay and then don't let you guys call on your spirit guides and or the angels for protection and assistance you guys can literally do that too okay because I think that's also very important when it comes to like protecting yourself and you know they could also help you you know, build a shield too, if you need, if you need to, but yeah. So, um, one of the very, very important points is, is your team and or the angels are always ready to help you and assist, but the thing is, they cannot directly intervene without your consent, so that's why you absolutely must consent to, like, their help and, like, so by calling them. And you can, you know, say their names if you know them, or if not, be like, yo, like, angels, I need some help, or spirit team, I need this, can you help me with that? And um, you could do it out loud, your head, write it down, or if you can type phone, like, you can do that all, of, like, that intention that you put out there is what will draw them into you. And then <clears throat> the very other other very important thing to remember too when it comes to you know ex uh ex um your guides like helping you is like you have to um know and trust that they are helping you because you don't if you don't trust them or don't believe them then like whatever you call them for isn't gonna work so 
especially in the case for protection and banishment, like you absolutely have to trust them to like know, like, you know, knowing that they are protecting you and, you know, against like whatever it is or whatever you ask for help, like you have to trust them that don't know that they're doing that. And they may give you a certain feeling or they may tell you somehow. So, yeah, but definitely be open and trusting of them because, like I said, if you don't, then it's just not going to work. And then I listed some angels that you guys can call upon, like, more specifically. I know there's a whole heck of a lot of angels, but not a lot of them. Like, I feel like only a couple of them came through to, like, be, like, more so in helping with shielding. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to write this little statement here. So, while it's true that all angels have their own unique ways and specialties to assist, but at the end of the day, all and any of them will come to help protect you from any perceived threats and fend them off, uh, fend them off any negativity and of course as you all know um michael is famous for this but it doesn't always have to be him so yeah and then i listed technically five angels but the four main ones i have is michael my, my buddy um he's known as the protector against evil and is frequently invoked for spiritual and physical protection he is seen as a warrior and defender helping to remove negativity and he can help shield too but he's like the og for this like he's yo that's my bro that's homeboy so yeah you guys can definitely call on him too if you know if that's what you're comfortable with and then we have Raphael. I also a lot. He's mostly associated with healing, but he does offer and protection. But he does, um, especially in matters of like related to health and well-being. And he can be called upon for protection during travel and seeking healing for oneself and yourself. But he will also fight somebody. Like, he doesn't play around either, but yeah, he can definitely protect you and guard you as well if you are comfortable with him, too. He's definitely chill. And then we have your books um, say he's, like, associated with like, wisdom and illumination, and, like, by the books, like, will characterize him as, like, not, like, he is a warrior, but, like, not Michael. But he's still powerful in my opinion and people say he's very good at giving wisdom and guidance and gives insight to individuals that are going through like stressful times but he's a badass okay he will you can guarantee he will beat some ass okay. all right one of my all three favorites and then we have gabriel he's my favorite i like them all don't worry but i I talk to him a lot the most. Um, he's also known as a messenger and often uh, invoked for guidance and clarity. Like, that's what a lot, a lot, a lot of sources say about him, too. But he's also a real baddie. Like, he's a real one, too. So, yeah, if you guys feel comfortable with Gabriel, you guys can call on him, too, for this last one. All right. I'm not being ego or anything but uh, this is like legit true but this next person you can definitely call upon too call upon my astral like no joke like you guys can dead ass do that i swear to god um my astral will protect you guys like that's his duty like he loves protecting y'all like it's his he loves it so much i he yes holly yes um you guys can definitely do that too like he'll hear you if you call like he works he me works closely with the angels too so they'll tell him like hey can you go do this or hey this person needs help or if i hear the call or he hears the call then you know he'll definitely come you know and help you like that's his duty like he loves he loves fighting loves to take down evil and protect you guys so much like he loves you i love you guys so throwing that out there too oh don't forget zion okay <laughs> all right then and yeah, 
literally the slideshow. I got my sources and information from these two books right here. I highly recommend it, these two books to you guys, if, you, if you're interested. But um, that's all for the slideshow. If you guys have any questions, you know, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And if you guys want to unmute yourselves, you can. But I'll probably keep this up for like a little bit. Hey, Arlen, how are you? Good, how are you? It's nice to hear you. I know that's right. It is good to be here. I'm excited. Um, so I just kind of wanted to chime in because I just wanted to piggyback off war, off what War Within was saying to Jewel Runner mm -hmm. about the protection okay. against the reptilians and the astral. And, you know, I had a, okay. an experience, yeah. you know, pretty similar, not necessarily with the reptilians, but um, I was getting attacked pretty viciously, uh, I would say, maybe like a year ago. Like, usually what I would do is, like, I would call on the angels or, like, I would call on Jesus and, like, whatever dark being it would be, it would just instantly go away. And then I went through a period of time where, like, I would call for help and nobody would show up. So, like, I felt so alone, kind of angry, kind of, you know, just isolated. It, it was so crazy because I would call for help, but, you know, nothing would show up. It was just me. And through those, through that time, I really realized that I was being prepared to, you know, just kind of learn how to defend myself, how to, you know, fight for myself so I can be able to fight for others. And that's what happened, you know, mm -hmm. through all that pain and through the suffering, it, it really helped. It helped me to overcome fear because there was a fear associated with it because I was afraid to even go to sleep at night. So that's oh one thing goodness. that kind of stood mm -hmm. out. So I had to learn how to overcome fear. I had to learn how to just learn how to trust the process um, because, you know, in mm -hmm. that time period, just kind of feeling abandoned you know, from, you know, the higher vibrational beings, you know, had to work through that process. Um, but then at the same time, how to, how to learn how to love, like even, or, or how to even fight with love, if that even makes sense. Because I learned that mm -hmm. the way to properly just fight that battle, because it was, I fought so many battles, but with that particular battle, it was almost like I would wake up and something would be suffocating me, holding me down, and I couldn't move. So I literally had to learn how to channel and radiate love throughout, you know, my environment, you know, with no, without being able to speak, without being able to talk, with just the feeling of just feeling and imagination. And that's how I learned how to overcome that. And, you know, once that was done, then I heard back from my guys, and it was this... It was this congratulations. It was this like you did it. Like I know it was this. I know it was rough on you and I know it was hard, but this was something that we had to do in order to prepare you. And it, it was amazing. And then there was another analogy that came to mind at the time. You know, uh, for us who, who may have kids, it's almost like no good parent comes to their kids to rescue every single time because then the child will become dependent on the parent and they won't be able to function on their own so sometimes mm -hmm. parents we have to just like eagles do when it's time for the chick to fly like the parents so push the push the, the fledgling out of the nest and to us looking at it that may be cruel and be unusual but you know sometimes we need that extra push you know from our parents or need that extra push from you know our spirit guides in order to us in order for us to reach the next level in our evolution. So I just kind of get out there, uh, just, you know, just let you know you got my support, you know, 100% mm -hmm. jewel runner. And I know it's not easy, but, you know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm here for you for sure. Thank you for sharing that. Like, that's, that's powerful. And, you know, I'm like really happy you shared that. Thank you. I'm sure, like, that's like, yeah, that's good advice. Yeah also um war within that's a good point too with like discernment too because that's another like slippery slope when it comes to like discernment and stuff um so that's why again like shielding like protecting yourself is very 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 important so you can have like an easier time like discerning like what entities actually who they are 
in like what's not good and like you know not good for you too so thank you also uh war within for pointing that out as well with the sermon mm -hmm. yeah i'm glad that was really helpful because i feel so bad i'm like uh, i'm sorry <laughs> all right um do you, any of you guys have any other questions oh you're welcome sky woman glad i could help in any way that's what i'm here for too and I felt this class was very important too, so, you know, I'm glad you guys are here with me today. And, um, yeah, and this will be uploaded and recorded. Well, this is being recorded and will be uploaded, I should say. Um, okay, can I add something? Yeah, go ahead. I, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, oh, great. Now I'm nervous because it's being recorded. Okay. Um... Okay, so I'll say this for like jewel runner situation. I had because she said that. Um, hold on, let me. I don't want to misquote her. Uh, okay, she had said that. Okay, yeah, I really appreciate that. Da da da. And you've been been afraid to go to sleep, and it's been affecting people in your day to day life, and you don't know how to protect them. So it's like with the sleep thing, I understand what you mean. I think uh, Pentecostal shaman also touched on that, like with his experience, like. Um, going through like a sleep paralysis type of experience where you couldn't like you were kind of like defenseless and you couldn't fight back right in my experience it's kind of been like because I've only had sleep paralysis like a few times like when I was younger yeah like the first two times yeah it was like scary mm -hmm. like it was, I was defenseless I couldn't do anything right um but the third time it was just like I don't know the once, like, I just decided to, like, fight back. And this was before I knew anything about star seeds or, you know, the power that we all have, right? So it's like, I just, something within me just decided to fight back. So it's like, I'm laying, like, on my side, right? And I can feel, like, a malevolent dark entity, like, standing at the, um, right behind me. Like, let's say, if I'm on the edge of the bed and I'm laying on my side, like, right behind me, there's, like, a dark entity standing right and right next to my bed, right? Where you can feel him, like, just looking at me, right? So instead of getting scared, I was just like, man, fuck this. And then I, and I got up to try to swing on him, right? And then as I did that, I woke up. So sometimes it could, from, so I guess, like, for me, it was sort of like a test of courage or, like, bravery. But, like, for you, I think, like, maybe you might need to really, like, really ignite that inner fire within yourself. Like, I know it's scary. I get it. Trust me. But sometimes you just got to, I think they said, like, uh, I this quote comes to mind. I, I don't want to misquote it, but it's like, um, bravery isn't just, like, blind courage, but it's, like, being able to take action in spite of your fear. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend... You know, oh, and also it's like, like I said, like with like the whole shielding and energy thing, it's like all these things derive from the source within you, your own willpower. Yeah. So it's like all those things, if your will is strong enough and your resolve is strong enough, you can create anything. So like in that time, when your when reptilian shows up, all you have to do is remember who you are, remember what you are at your core. And harness that to create whatever weapon or power that you feel you need. Whether it's a sword, gun, I don't know, going Super Saiyan, whatever. <laughs> That's all within <laughs> your Saiyan. power. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Super Saiyan good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay, no. Yeah, well, maybe not everything needs to be solved with violence. Yeah. Yeah, no, again, it doesn't have all, to be. Yeah. Again, it's all up to you. But you have to yep. really tap into yourself and find that inner power. Mm -hmm. That's there. You definitely have it. Because, like, really, like, at the end of the day, like, all those, like, crystals, symbols, objects, they're just tools. You know, yeah. you're the one that powers them. And, exactly. you know, they're just tools to help you. All that power is just within you. So you, we are truly powerful, you know. That's why they try to... You know, attack us, make us feel like we're nothing, you know, just to keep us thinking we're not powerful. But they're scared of us, you know, and that's why they do these things. But no, like, we're not scared of you. 
<laughs> so yeah, Arlene, you had mentioned that you wanted to touch on like what I said earlier about the willpower thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this like about your thing, or is it like still like with the class? No, no, no. I, I'm just curious. I, I, I know what you meant. Um. Well, technically, um, the class is over, and Andy, if you want to stop recording, you can, if nobody else has any other questions. But, um, Zion, like, were you, like, talking about your own, like, personal, like, will thing, like, from, like, your past, like, memories, or that you want to yeah, tell me about? Yeah, that's something, or... uh, okay, so I guess that, that was something that, like, I got from the past life that, like, I felt like would help for most people. It's like, oh. it's like... A, yeah, it's like it's like it's not necessarily specific to me. It's like something that I think everyone can do to a certain degree. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, go ahead and share it. I would love to hear it. So, um, so essentially, like, I, so it's like I don't know how because like I get it, like I understand it, like on a deeper level because like I kind of told myself, but it's like to put in words is kind of difficult. But it's like, um, mm -hmm. so. I, the way I think about it is like you, so like let's say okay, so like the water analogy, you know, like uh, how Bruce Lee talks about, um, you have to be like water, right? Because mm -hmm. water is formless, and whatever shape or object you put water in, it becomes like that object, and that yeah. you could say the same for your own like internal energy, in a way. It's like we all have like this, I guess you could say flame or light or however you conceptualize it, right? Within us, mm -hmm. right? And it's up to us how we choose to harness it. So, and how, however we harness it is, again, it's only limited to our imaginations. I would recommend, like, a lot of people, first, you have to have a strong resolve, first of all. Like, willpower mm -hmm. is a very big thing. It's like you have mm -hmm. to know who you are, know who you, what, what you stand for, and know, and truly know your power and your worth. Because at that mm -hmm. point, you're unshakable. And your willpower is at an all-time high. And when you have high willpower, the more potent whatever form you shift it, that power into is. So like, let's say if I wanted to create like a super powerful sword, right? Yeah. If my willpower is weak, I would have a sword. It would work. But at some point, if I'm facing a really strong enemy, it would bounce off, right? Mm -hmm. But the stronger mm -hmm. my willpower is, the more powerful the weapon is. Yeah, so it's like that. And it, and uh, and inversely, it's it's that same thing with imagination too. It's like we often can restrict ourselves to what people teach us, or like what we've seen, or what we've seen work for other people. So it's like just like how, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate how you said that. You know, people can like make up their own sigils or their own version of shields that they can imagine that's unique to them. Uh, just yeah. like a lot of people like will just take what they've seen someone else do and say, okay, that's the standard of how it should be done when really yeah. there really is no standard, you know? Exactly. So it's like, right. So it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like the willpower and the imagination kind of have like an inverse, not an inverse relationship. But it's like a, the, to, to reach like the ultimate peak to become unbeatable, you need both. So you need to empower both of those things and use both of those things in harmony with each other to become unbeatable, essentially. Or if you're trying to create like the mm -hmm. ultimate shield or the ultimate weapon, you need both of those things. Sure. Yeah, that's, I like that a lot. That's like so true. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to have faith in yourself. Yes. That's fa absolute faith in yourself. Like, listen, thank you for yeah. sharing that war with them. I really like that. No problem. But I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I'm, I mean, I think you got it. But did it make sense for everybody else? Uh, did it make sense for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Yeah, okay. Thank you for coming. You guys have any other questions or anything else you guys want to add? Yes. Yes. You're, you're the, the one that determines use. the power. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Believe in yourself more. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Like you. Oh. Are stronger me. and powerful than way you know it. Yeah. That reminded me. Um. Hold on, let me see if I can find that. Mm -hmm. Damn, I can't find it. But like, there was, um, damn, I really can't. The one time I need, I can't find it. Okay, so there was this. Um, <laughs> I guess I just have to like uh, paraphrase from what I remember. But there was this uh, video I saw mm -hmm. that was talking about 
um like the fundamentals of magic right and one of the things mm-hmm. like one of like the baseline requirements is a strong will because mm-hmm. um so it's like and they i remember they had said like a person with the strongest will can overcome any spell mm-hmm. so which I means like like, which means like so like let's say if someone were to cast cast bleh, i can't speak cast a hex on you or some type of curse or like a um malevolent evil spell right if your will is unbreakable that spell has no power over you mm-hmm. so yeah and i think i got i think i got yeah i think that's like the main point i wanted to get across yeah so like yeah your willpower is definitely very important and it's not easy mm-hmm. and like i say that but it's not like necessarily like the easiest thing to have yeah especially. yeah and you know, at a time like ours, like where people want you to think a certain way, behave in a certain way, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't think this, you can't think that. You know, is um, okay. That's an interesting question. Okay, what yeah, that is. is the definition yeah. of will? What is will? Okay, so let's look at like the textbook definition. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on. That's not okay. Not that will I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, I'll just use willpower. Okay, so the noun willpower, control, control exerted to do something or restrain impulses, right? And that's mm-hmm. synonymous with determination, resolution, resolve, single-mindedness, single-mindedness, purposefulness, commitment, dedication, tenacity, self-control, self-discipline. Yeah, all these things are a combination of your will. So that's why I said... At the core, you need to know who you are, know yourself, what you stand for, because all these things define your will, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And like I said, it's not easy. And, (laughs) you know, because we're in a concrete jungle, but we're in constant Mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. You know, the powers that be are always trying to sedate your mind and Mm -hmm. eat, literally eat your soul. (laughs) So, yeah, it's not easy to build. And that's. And that's the whole kill because, like, if everybody had strong wills, <laughs> no one could be controlled. Exactly. You know? Yeah, that is true for sure. And I know, like, society too, like, makes us feel crazy with our experiences, and like, you know, makes you to sec- second guess yourself, question yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and doubt who you are as a person, and you know, your beliefs and all, but. At the end of the day, like, you know, it doesn't matter what they think or say, like, truly are powerful. Like, don't doubt yourself. I'm still, like, learning that, too. So, even Yeah, I'm still learning it, too. It's like, we're all still students in this game, you know? That's why we're here. (laughs) We're we're here to learn in as much as teach and help. Mm -hmm. See, some of y'all are typing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a very good definition andy thank you yeah mental determination to make decisions choose actions and control your behavior according to your desires and intentions to get okay to get through tough obstacles in your life slash vision yeah yeah also that is definitely true of dark buddy like we get to build ourselves i mean it, it kind of sucks at first but once you, you know realize like hey this is meant for me this is supposed to make me a better person or a more powerful person like what is truly beautiful you know and it, it it's you know you'll later realize it's you know good and you know all that <laughs> up three 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 that time <laughs> thank you andy you can end the recording now i really 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 appreciate you doing this thank you andy you have a good night okay i appreciate you, you andy uh- <laughs>